You're gonna move, I'm gonna run you over, bro. It's up to you. I'm gonna, you're gonna move, I'm gonna push you out the way. I'm Damien Gale. I've been on the road with Insulate Britain for the past two months as they try to force the government to insulate the nation's homes. It's the only thing we can do to try and wake people up to the fact that our government is destroying the future for our children. By blocking motorways, riling up drivers. No, you're not! You're fucking trying to blank now, the government! It don't work that way, does it? And arguing on breakfast TV. So they can put us in prison, and that's the no, Home Secretary's that's decision. Do it. You'll I know I've had enough. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Insulate Britain activists were taking big risks sitting in the roads. No, what the fuck are you doing? My son is 11. Yes. He needs to get to school today. But who are they? And can this type of protest ever work? I love this picture of them, the steely-faced OAPs of Insulate Britain. <laughs> Do you think they've got an image problem? That's the image they're trying to put across, you know, they're, they're dedicated climate activists. They've got the sandwiches in their bag, they've got their, their satsumas and their bananas, ready for, for the long haul, basically. So I recognise these activists across the road, we're just trying to discreetly wait for them to come out and start blocking the road, which I think they're probably going to do any second now. Um, but there's a, looks like they're just waiting for the right moment when the traffic stops. Okay, here we go. You're going to move, I'm going to run you over, bro. It's up to you. I'm gonna, you're going to move, I'm going to push you out the way. So that would be a very dangerous thing to do. We're not the people you should be targeting. Do your protests with your placards outside government like everyone else. Why stop us from going to work? We're really not targeting You are! You are targeting us! Why stop us from going to work? All of the methods are failed. This, this, this certainly, and this is working. Is it stopping us from going to work? Do you know about what their what their cause is and what their demands are? Insulation, is it? Yeah. Very ignorant people. And what what do you hope will happen to these people? I hope they get arrested, thrown in jail, and the key thrown away. And so did the protesters. They originally wanted at least 100 people in prison to come inside with the COP26 climate summit. And then move on to the arrest phase if they don't move, all right? Okay, just pick one. We'll start with this up. So you might see that um, their hands are glued to the floor now. When the police arrive, they stick themselves down to make it more difficult for them to be removed. But they told me that they don't do that until the police arrive, probably because of the danger of their hands being yanked off the floor by, by people taking matters into their own hands. What type of group? I always remind myself of why I'm doing it um, and I am so terrified of the future if not enough is being done by this government and other governments of the world. Would you be willing to die for this cause? I would say so because I have three children and I would rather me die than they die a horrible death in 20 years time. I mean it's just to me, that's a no-brainer, and it's a crazy thing to say, but I think we've come to this point that ordinary people like me are willing to die for this cause. Since the 13th of September, Insulate Britain's activists have targeted motorways and major roads in and around London with human roadblocks. They aim to cause as much disruption as possible and as many arrests. Most had a history of campaigning with Extinction Rebellion, but many felt it had lost its way and something more needed to be done. They are demanding the government insulate all Britain's homes by 2030. It was a single practical demand they felt was a concrete first step towards tackling the climate crisis, and one that was most likely to make tabloid headlines. So 
So team three is Julie, Liz and Andrea. The activists invited us to an Airbnb that they had rented for the week, a kind of safe house where they were planning their next action. Also got We're here, so oh, we right. could we could we could glue on this. We could, yeah, yeah but not yeah. in the middle. Okay, so only only one of us can glue, and then we glue to each other. Yes, so actually, one can glue to the rope, and then like a hand, and then maybe hey, another person. That? Yeah, I'll go, I'll go onto the road. Yeah. I've got quite dry skin, so I stick to tarmac well, and then we just go onto each other. Four of us, four of us waiting here, and four of us waiting here, so we can go out and do yeah. two bands, right? So yeah. Yeah, um, having the driver drive in to us. I was here, and the car was coming up against me, against me, against, against us, and I'm wondering if it might be better just to lie down to let the car drive over us. I'm not having a car drive over anyone. In my no, room. I'm not saying they're going to drive over us. I'm just wondering. I, mean, yeah. I don't want anyone in this room to have a car go over their body. I don't either, but it, that, what happened on Monday was not, yeah. not, not working. <laughs> this place is like a palace. It's really nice, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's lovely. And how do you feel about coming and, you know, sleeping top to tail with people you've only known for a little while? And I think, I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's the general feeling that mm. I've got. It's interesting to see older people, and I found this with XR as well, you know, you see older people getting involved with protesting yeah. and really almost being like the radical edge, you know, where yeah. it's so often associated with young people. Well, we've got the time, we've got the um, nothing less to lose. Yeah. We don't have jobs to lose. And in my case, I remember what the world was like when I was young, and it was very different. I'm, I'm kind of amazed at myself that I'm here doing this, and, uh, you know, pleased to be doing it. Yeah. Sorry you're held up. Well, Can don't you me. fuck off. Just go away, so talk to me. Alright, okay. Well, Paul's in absolute chaos. People are dying because of you. That poor woman who's had a stroke, hope you're pleased with yourself. That's a, that's Go away. Go away. Go away. Just by the M25 Dartford Crossing, Insulate Britain have come out and blocked the roads here. And unlike in previous protests, the police have been on, got on the scene within minutes, it seems like, or even within seconds. Some of them have managed to glue themselves to the floor. Most of them haven't, and they're just being pulled out of the road now by police. We need some action from this treasonous government of ours. It's the only thing we can do to try and get some action. Good morning. Hi, um, Louise. Can I, can I ask your name? Can you tell me how you're doing? We're, we're doing fine. We're doing. Business as usual. Sorry. Trying to, trying to get some action. Uh, not even the first name. Sorry, guys, I need to interrupt here. Um, sorry, I don't want to careful stepping over you. Um, good morning Louise. Well, I'm arresting your suspicion of obstructing the highway uh, and causing a public nuisance. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do mention my question, something which later on in court. Okay. Boris Johnson, get the job done. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Wondering what you think about this this protest? How you feel yeah, about what they're doing? I think it's very funny. You think it's funny? Yeah, I think it's funny. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, what do you think is funny about uh, it? What do you think is funny about it? They ain't got no sense in it, so that's why it's funny. Really? <laughs> what do you know about what their cause is? Um, not really. Just insult. Is it insult Britain or something like that? Insulate Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We've seen it popping on, online, isn't it? Oh, that's another one. Like <laughs> <Thanks>, what? <laughs> um, yeah. Where do you get your news from about what it is that they're doing and who they are? Uh, so I, I use Twitter a lot. Uh, you see like clips off like Good Morning Britain and stuff like that, where their lead has gone on, and you see him walk off. <laughs> so that cut through. A lot of people have spoken about that to us. Yeah, I mean, what impact did that have on you? It, it just shows that I don't think he, even he, doesn't really know what he's trying to achieve here. The traffic's moving again, so it looks like. This, this action has not been as much of a success as previous ones. Do you, do you have any idea why it was that the police managed to get here so quickly? 
No, I don't know. Ah. Should ask this gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> How did you manage to get here so quickly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's worth a try. It's worth a try. It's always yeah. worth a try. <laughs> As police wrap this up, we got word of a more successful action up the road. Yeah, I'm going to be getting two years in prison. I'm losing my house. I'm losing my job because there's no other place I can be but here. But whatever, whatever kind of positive cause you're you're trying to gain for, the ma the main thing is you've pissed off the public. Like to be honest. <laughs> Every time I have been released from the police station, I have said to the police that I intend to reoffend, and that how irresponsible is it of the police to let me go again, to release me, to reoffend, and cause this disruption? Hi. Hi Louise, how are you doing? Hi, good, thank yeah. you. Nice Louise Lancaster used to be a teacher, but quit to devote herself to the campaign. So far I'd only spoken to her when she'd been under arrest, or stuck to a road. Would you like a cup of tea? Yes please, yeah. So I wanted to sit down with her and ask her what it's like being part of Insulate Britain. How many times have you been arrested now? What? I think that was number 12. Number 12? Gosh, so you must be getting quite used to it now. I think I'm getting quite used to it. In fact, being in the cell is probably a bit of a regen. <laughs> you can have a nap, have a read. When we've covered some of these actions and we've spoken to passers-by and drivers and we've asked them if they understand what it is that you're doing and what your cause is about, sometimes there hasn't been a, a whole lot of clarity about what, you know, what it is that you're campaigning for. So I'm sorry that people don't understand where we're from. Um, maybe they don't want to think about it. Maybe it's just too upsetting a topic. Um, or maybe it's too boring a topic, I'm not sure. But we are constantly trying to get that message across. Well, but I mean, you know, from, from an external perspective, looking at Insulate Britain, it seems as though it's mainly older people, it's mainly people who are middle class, um, maybe slightly more well off. I mean, do you, do you think that's a fair assessment? I think we are who we are, and it's other people make that judgment if they want to. But I think Insulate Britain um, is, is very varied, as much as it, as much as it can be. Um, we're open to anybody to join us. And if, if people who are retired, there's more of those people, that makes sense. I mean, ha, have you thought, tried to think of ways to draw in more people from, from different ethnic groups or different, more diverse backgrounds? We're always trying to get on board as many, uh, as many people as possible. And we don't, we don't mind who they are. So if it turns out that more from a certain demographic have come, come forward, then that, that is how it is. But um, we welcome everybody. And how have you felt about the ways in which you've been characterised by, by the press and by politicians? Yeah, I mean, press and politicians, I think, is, I think it's obscene. Um, they're the criminals in all of this. Uh, and, and that is possibly why they are, they are trying to demonise us, because we're showing them up. But that's what we intend to do. We want other people to see that. But we need more numbers just to really show the governments of this world that the people of this world are not prepared just to let nothing happen. A really, really uh, a standing up and saying, act now. Oliver, whose house we were in, is one of nine activists already summoned to High Court for breaking an injunction banning Insulate Britain from the roads. So how are you feeling about it? Well, I'm crapping myself. No. Crapping myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind of proud as well. Like, this is the right time to be doing yeah. this. We're going to have COP, it's going to, the chance of COP working are going to be almost precisely zero. And then it's like, well, what are we doing? Well, we're just going to lock some people up for wanting the future. I feel like, yeah. like, I'm, like I'm fucking disgusted. So I, this is one way that I can express that by going to prison. That's never a minute. Yeah, where are we going with this? Yeah. We're like in uncharted territory. Today in the High Courts, the government has shown its cowardice. Nine ordinary people have been committed to prison for demanding that the government fulfil its election pledges by insulating Britain's homes. What hope do we have of them protecting our children, our economy or our country? Woo!